Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mikey intern Ned Reynolds in the studio on a Wednesday morning. So, big game in Springfield yesterday at Hammonds Field, didn't we? Very interesting test. The Bears are playing the number 12 team in America, Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys from the Big 12 Conference are a very good team, but so are the Bears. And Missouri State played great baseball for the first half of the game. And then in the second half of the game, they did not play great baseball. This is kind of deja vu from the NCAA tournament last June when Missouri State had a 12 to nothing lead on Oklahoma State and let it get away. Well, this time, the Bears had two leads on the Cowboys, 5 to nothing and 8 to 5, and could not sustain it. Why? Because the pitching staff just simply is not in the groove yet. They walked nine batters, this is Bears pitchers, walked nine Oklahoma State Cowboys, and you do not open up the doors and give a team that good plenty of chances. And Oklahoma State did, came back, had a seven-run seventh inning and beat the Bears 12-10. to I thought Missouri State played very well. They had four home runs in the game. Bears have plenty of power, and it's young kids. They can bomb that baseball. But you've got to have all phases of the game. There was one particular stretch where the Bears had an inning-ending double play and made a bad throw to first base, an error, and gosh, that left the door open. And again, with good teams like Oklahoma State, you cannot, you can't leave the door ajar. You have got to slam it shut on them and keep them out of the game. Still, I think this Bears ball club is very good. They're five and three on the year, and I think they're going to win a whole lot of games. Now, well, hopefully, that pitching staff can kind of step up because when you've got a five to nothing lead, if your pitching is there, man, you ain't got to worry about nothing. How about last year when they had a twelve to nothing? Yeah, lead. I know. That's <laughs> but that's not a very good sign, especially this early on in the season. But it is early, so we'll see what happens. Also, a really sad note in the sports world this morning. Yeah, this this really bothers me because this is a, the. the individual who passed away, 97-year-old Reverend Bob Richards, was a great American sports hero back in the 1940s, 50s, and really even after that because he was the national spokesman. You're probably a little too young to remember this, Mike, but national spokesman for Wheaties, the, the breakfast cereal, and he was a great spokesman for it. Reverend Bob was two-time Olympic uh, gold medalist in in the pole vaulting. He was called the pole vaulting parson or the vaulting vicar, as the media like to use the alliteration. And he was he was really a great guy, great personality, a minister, ordained minister, one of the all-time great athletes ever produced at the University of Illinois, six-time champion in track and field and decathlon at Illinois, three Olympics in London, Helsinki, and Melbourne, And in that last one in Melbourne, he not only won the gold medal in pole vaulting, but he also competed in the decathlon. Great uh, individual, one of the America's great heroes, passing away the Reverend Bob Richards at the age of 97. What an incredible life, though. And I bet he had more Wheaties than anybody else in the entire (laughs) history of the world. So uh, thanks for what you left us. Last but not least, it had some exhibition baseball games yesterday. Cardinals against the Nationals. Is that right? Cardinals did win. Knocked off the Nationals by a score of 5-3. to Nolan Arnado, 3-for-3. That's a great start. Now, he's only with the Cardinals for a short time, as are Wainwright and Michaelis. Uh, and and several others who are playing for other teams. But that World Baseball Classic begins here a little bit later on. I I think it's the first week, first next week is when they'll begin play, and that's when those guys will all leave that club and then go to the World Baseball Classic. But they don't lose. Baseball, come on, you're getting the training. It's training, it's training, doesn't matter what uniform you're Anyway, the Cardinals got a 5-3 win, and the Kansas City Royals come away with a win. It was 6-6 in the ninth inning. And the Royals scored six runs. 12-6, to six, Kansas City beats the Cleveland Guardians. Outstanding wins for both of them. Yeah, man. If the uh, Like I said earlier in the week, if uh, spring training counted, the Royals would be off to a hell of a start. <laughs> um, but you don't want to get too hot, too spoon, especially just say we were had a great spring training in, in our regular season. Man. So when the Super Bowl happened in Arizona, media made a big deal about the fact that the sod father was uh, involved in... Obviously, for you old dog, it's a pretty cool thing that he's still involved in. But at the same time, after they made a big deal about him being involved in the uh, field and all that stuff, getting a lot of flack for the lack thereof in its quality. So he had some thoughts about that, didn't he? I'm glad you said involved. You're talking about George Toma, who is 94 years old. And, of course, for years and years and years, decades, as a matter of fact, 
if not centuries, <laughs> gained great fame as the groundskeeper for the Kansas City Chiefs. And he was he's in the Hall of Fame. The man was a master at taking care of fields and has been involved in all 57 of the Super Bowl games, either in a direct capacity or an advisory capacity, which he was this year. 94, you're not going to get around all that much. So they asked him yesterday what was the problem, and he was not at all shy about saying, hey, the field, I think he is in a way apologizing for not being there, but he said it was overwatered, and you don't do it that way. Apparently what they did was they rolled the field out. Of course, you can do that. It's on train tracks, so to speak. And they rolled the field out in the Arizona sun, watered it, and then brought it right back again, still damp, and then covered it up. He said, you don't do that. What kind of foolishness is this? He said the field was ill-prepared. You leave it out to dry. And that's how it's, it really begins its growth and, and thickness level. And they didn't do that at all. They left it too slippery. It was also beginning to rot, he said, because they hadn't taken good care of it. So he blamed the groundskeeper and he blamed the NFL for not keeping very close look on what was going on with that field. And when George Toma gets angry, <laughs> you know it fully well. We've had him down here a couple of times. He's a very, very good guy. Great interview. Um, and the fact that he's been with the Chiefs. And, you know, the Chiefs field has been world-renowned for years yeah. and years and years. So... Um, it's funny that uh, they made a big deal about him being involved, and then at the end of the day, they still screwed it up because he wasn't there. <laughs> but you know what I mean? You can't find good help these days, Ned, and I think that's the biggest lesson in this situation. <laughs> so um, NCAA might be screwing with football games again, aren't they? This is interesting because yeah, the, the rules committee for the NCAA, especially in football, is meeting in Indianapolis this week. They may, Indianapolis I think is an hour ahead of us, they may have already started now. But bottom line is this, the college officials in the NCAA for football want the games shortened. And they're, they want this not necessarily because of customer appeal, but because it would lessen the level of injuries in college football. It's, it's a violent game. Come on, we've talked about that many times. And to use as their background on this, NCAA did an experiment here, and they, they judged and looked at the number of plays that were used. And college football, college teams, on an average around the country, have 180 plays a game. The NFL has 154. They said, we, we need to shorten this. We need to lessen the level of injury possibilities in college football. So indeed, what they're thinking of doing is tinkering, so to speak, with the game clock. And what one of the, one of the proposals, there are several of them, but one of the proposals is instead of stopping the clock after every first down, you leave it running until the final two minutes of the game. Then you can stop it. That's when it's critical. But before then, they think that'll help shorten the game. There are other little possibilities that they're talking about, too, in this game, but they're in this whole circumstance. But they do want to shorten it, and, and I'm, I'm in agreement. I've been over to Bears games. They average well over three hours to play. Oh, yeah. You because, yeah. And it's, it's mainly because college football is more offensively skewed than, than the NFL. But also that game clock stoppage is a big part of strategy too for a lot of these teams so that's gonna flip a lot of things up but i agree i agree with you and i agree with that i think it shouldn't be as long and i think that would definitely alleviate some of the time so we are in agreement sir last but not least we did have some college basketball last night didn't we how about kansas are they ever amazing here's a team that is one of the top ranked teams in the country they're number three in the associated press college basketball poll Played Texas Tech last night, and the Red Raiders from Lubbock. Game was in Lawrence, but the Red Raiders gave Kansas all sorts of fits. But the Jayhawks won it 67-63, to and Mike, this is the 13th, 13th Big 12 Conference Championship in the last 17 years for Kansas. That is how dominant this team has been. And even before then, of course, they dominated because this is one of the premier programs in the country. 13 times in the last 17 years, Kansas has won the Big 12. They do have one regular season game remaining. That's against Texas on Saturday down in Austin. <laughs> you know, those fans will turn out for that, but it doesn't make any difference in the final standing. It is KU as at least co-champion of the Big 12. Tennessee and Arkansas playing last night in Knoxville and the Tennessee Volunteers. They're pretty good when they get their game together. 75-57 over the Razorbacks. And Texas A&M and Ole Miss playing down in Oxford, Mississippi. It was Texas A&M 69, Ole Miss 61. 
Now, the final games for most of the, the uh, Division I teams is coming up latter part of this week or this weekend, and then it's on to the many conference tournaments. The Bears and the Missouri Valley are playing their conference tournaments starting tomorrow night, so there's plenty of basketball going on. Oh, the, hell yes, there is, and we're getting close to tournament time. I know uh, my Wildcats take on uh, OU tonight. And that nope. may be, and no, I, I was going to say it may be their regular season finale, but I don't think no, it they is. Got one I think more. they all play on Saturday. Yeah, they got one more uh, K State taking West Virginia this weekend. Ned, you have a great day, and I will see you on Thursday.